Modern motoring has been revolutionized in recent years. With the advent of the touchscreen LCD displays we find in most modern cars. Apple CarPlay seems to have been the go-to application in most cars for the last few years. But that doesn't mean that those of us with older cars cannot benefit from the same functionality. I'm Andy and this is my review of the CarPureed Pro 103. Probably worth pointing out before we start that I'm not being paid to review this and those that follow the channel will know I give brutally honest feedback on products. However, they have sent me a device for free to review and for my wonderful subscribers who may be looking to buy an LCD CarPlay screen for the car, they are offering a $50 or £39.50 discount on these if you visit the link on screen or in the video description and enter Andy Charger as the discount code in the shopping cart definitely not something to be sniffed at. We're going to unbox it, we're going to see what we've got and we're going to install it today in a Mark 7 Fiesta. So here we have our Car Pureed 103 Pro that we're going to install in the Fiesta. This touchscreen for the car, you could use this for navigation, music, audio video entertainment and of course Apple CarPlay. As we can see from the box it includes a HD display, IPS touchscreen, Bluetooth, USB, audio video, voice controls, which is handy, we don't even need to touch the screen, and a USB charger port. And all of this connects to your car using the 12 volt cigarette lighter. So let's get this unboxed and see what we have inside. Okay, let's open the lid. Looks nicely packaged and protected. Oh. So there's our screen. Again, it's all protected. So it's around 10 to 12 inches wide and maybe two to three inches tall. Let's remove this packaging. So there we have the cigarette lighter interface and it connects to the device by a USB-C by the look of it. Like a sticky dashboard mount. Again, this is a bracket for the screen itself, I believe, so we can mount it. Another mounting plate for the bracket. A jack lead, a three and a half millimeter jack lead, I guess for connecting the audio into your AUX socket on your car radio. And we also have a manual, which seems to be pretty comprehensive, as well as the how to install guide. Let's take a look at this screen. There we go. Decent size. Doesn't feel particularly heavy, but at the same time it doesn't feel flimsy and light. And there we can see the bracket on the back for connecting into that interface, I believe. Here's your connection point. So you've got the USB-C socket, which I guess supplies the power. There's also a USB-AB socket for supplying, I guess, some form of USB stick memory. So you could have music that you want to play through that. Audio out, interestingly, that's to go off to your car. So that would be the bit that I think is going to connect to the AUX port. There's also a cam socket there as well an SD card, and this is an external mic port if you were using this for connecting up to a hands-free wireless mic in the car. These items seem to be fairly substantial. The brackets feel nice and strong. The suction cup, well, that'll be interesting when we apply it to the dash to see how that works. Wires all feel quite sturdy, good quality. So let's get this installed in the Fiesta. We're going to have to make some sacrifices to what we can see with the existing audio visual equipment. The clock itself and the date is just here in the centre part of the dash on the Fiesta and this is the only place I think that's got a flat enough panel to attach the sucker for the screen. So it does mean with the screen in position, if I just hold that up, if we put the screen up like that, 
we are going to lose sight of the clock. I don't think that's too much of a concern because I'm sure this will also provide us the time and the date. I'll wipe over with some isopropanol alcohol to make sure it's really clear and free of grease. And then we're going to attach the sticky plate onto this and hopefully mount this screen. I think this position is also the best because it's going to give us the least visibility restriction than if we put it anywhere else in the dash. And it's also going to give good line of sight for the driver when they're using the navigation. So here's the bracket that we're going to use. So we need to peel off this sticky layer on the bottom, attach it on the dash, remembering to point this part here, which is the mounting bracket for the back of the screen, forwards towards us. The mounting plate is on a bit of a ball joint, so you can angle it towards you once this is stuck in position. This plate, make sure it's centrally aligned, which it is. Push down, and then you use this button to lock it into place. Now that is going nowhere. Then you can have the angle set by this control, and also you've got this extension bar if you want it close towards you. Now here is the mounting point on the back of the bracket of the screen. To make it easy to fit this on, I'm gonna pull this ball joint out of this socket, like so, take the screen, and ensure that I'm sliding this all the way up to engage it, like so. Now on the back of the screen, and attach firmly. I'm now gonna place the ball joint over the control once more, and then we can do this up and tilt that back so you can see me doing up that control so it's nice and tight. Now we can angle this to where we want it. Well, I'm going to put it to about here and do it up nice and tight to hold the upright position. I'm going to just give that a tilt. It is now perfectly angled towards me. Jake, I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully that should be fine. Now, if I undo this top nut, I can actually slide that right out towards me again. I can angle that round so it's more aiming at me. And because it's got that ball joint, obviously if my passenger wants to watch movies, we can angle it at the passenger and the passenger can be entertained. And for the driver, navigation and car controls. In pre-measure, I'm going to plug in the 12 volt cigarette lighter next. 12 volt cigarette lighter in, like so. And there we go, the screen has come to life. Now the screen itself has got really bright display and it's nice and easy to see those items are really good. Look at this, this is great. So I'm also going to connect up the jack socket to this for the audio out. I'm going to turn that radio on and choose the aux input. While the screen can be used completely independently, it's best to pair this device with your phone. And to do so, you go to Bluetooth settings on your phone, look for the CarPuri device. Now that comes up with a passcode. Now if I hit pair, it will pair with the device. And hey presto, the screen is now linked and it's come up with the navigation. And what you'll notice it's using Apple CarPlay, so I can select Waze quite easily. I can also select Spotify. I can go to the settings and look at what other apps are available. So I've got the whole range of items. Everything I would need for driving. The screen is pretty responsive as well. And all in all, the device is really nice and simple to use. Features with this LCD device is that it runs completely independently if you want it to. That means you don't even need a radio in the car. In speaker, and while it probably doesn't have the definition and volume of your car radio, it does still provide the necessary audio for things such as navigation and Bluetooth audio. Some of the basic features it includes is a clock. You can also set the brightness of the device using this handy slider. So if you want it really bright or really dark, it also has this volume button so you can control the media and also the voice separately. So let's look at some of the basic applications. As well as the clock to tell us the time, we've got the hands-free mobile, our own Bluetooth music. We can supply USB stick music to the car as well, or even an SD card. What about this feature? We can use this application to pair our phones with the CarPuri device itself, and we can 
broadcast applications straight to the screen. So the big question is, would I recommend this device to any of you out there to buy? As you know, I give very honest feedback on these devices and tools that I review, and absolutely I would. This is a really, really good piece of kit for the car that provides that modern feel with an LCD display to an old car. My daughter's been using this for a couple of weeks in her Fiesta and she absolutely loves it. The performance this gives to the audio compared to the standard radio is mind blowing. I don't know how it does it, but the standard radio is quite tinny and quiet, but using this, it just turns it into a really bassy, great sound in the car. And I can't explain that. The range of applications that you can access and use are second to none. It gives you that full Apple CarPlay functionality. And I think for the money that you pay for it, it's perfect. And what's better, if you're interested in buying one of these units, if you visit the carpure.com website at the link above, put the item you want into your basket and go to the checkout, and you enter the checkout code of Andy Charger, you'll receive a $50 discount on your order. You can't say fairer than that. So this might be a really good solution for those of you out there that own a TT that don't want to mess around putting double DIN units into your dash. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen on the channel today. And if you have, then please do give this video a thumbs up and also think about subscribing to my channel if you've not already done so, where you'll find a whole host of content on the Audi TT Mark 1 and of course other cars. Thanks for watching, see you soon, take care.